Let's go, bro. Three shots, four part, I just do two, one pup, part four, birdie, woo -hoo. new driver, info, replace, M2, pop five, fairway, what you fin do? Think I'll try to get on into start right, good line, good view, Andrew. It's like 1 30 in the morning. And we're headed 550 miles approximately to the Pine Barrens. Shooter McGavin, two thumbs that's up high and two fingers pointed at you. Pew pew, fair way to green, conk off that I'm playing. Sometimes these parts are green, look like an island. I'm punching and right, keep it. Ryan French from the Monday Q. Um, if you're listening to the body pricing of stuff, like I know I was resharing your stuff way back when uh, a good buddy of mine, Ziggy, had a flat tire on the way to, I think he was going to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he was out in Saskatchewan at the time when that happened. And Ziggy's just holding the camera, man. Ziggy's not uh, changing that tire. So, but uh, they were on like a dirt road, if I remember, like way back in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think they were he heading to, um, oh, what course was it? The Elk Course, Elk Ridge, Elk Ridge, I think. So they were like, they yeah. were somewhere like yeah. in North Saskatchewan or something. It might not be, but maybe Ziggy can kind of confirm that. But we were following the page before, but that was kind of the first one that stuck out to me. And then, uh, you know, we've been following kind of ever since. So if you're, if you follow the pod or listen to the pod, you probably have seen uh, some of your stuff. But can you just kind of give us an idea, Ryan, uh, who you are, how, how you kind of got things started with the Monday Q info? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I run the Monday Q info page i've done it since day one and uh i cover the minor leagues of golf i'm the only one dumb enough to dedicate full time to uh minor leagues of of golf um yeah it kind of started uh our son jackson had brain surgery seven years ago i left my job in the restaurant business don't have a journalistic background never had i've just always been a golf nerd i played uh community college golf and um, I caddied on mini tours off and on just for fun and had gotten to know some guys, gotten to know the life outside of the golf course. And, uh, so when my son had brain surgery, I left my job, what I thought for was for a couple of weeks and I've never gone back to work. So, uh, seven years later, I'm on this podcast and, uh, yeah, it's, it's been the craziest of rides it's uh it's been it's been pretty wild so ryan originally like you mentioned you had done some like hatting and stuff on many tours and uh which i'm looking at a couple of my bibs over there too it's it's so much fun like it's an absolute blast some it of the is. players that you meet some of the players that you caddy for whether or not it's a buddy but some of the guys in the other groups the other caddies it's always such a good time but um you know is there anything that is there any like reason why it was many tours that you you know when you Obviously, the Monday Q is kind of synonymous with mini tours, with guys trying to, uh, guys and girls trying to, you know, qualify for for events, right? So, is there was there any reason why you kind of like honed your your focus in on uh, on mini tours? Yeah, I mean, I've always, even when I was a kid, I was kind of fascinated with the the outer layer, the outer layers of of pro sports, whether that was like. You know, I was a Pistons fan in basketball or the Lions or whatever. Like the guy who, you know, got cut and signed to the practice squad four times in the NFL or, you know, got cut from the Pistons and signed by another team. And so golf has that all the time and probably one of the most stories because there is no, there's no one to tell you to quit or you can't do it. Mm -hmm. If you have money, you can tee it up. So uh, there's a lot of stories out there. Uh, but yeah, those caddy trips were definitely the reason that I'm here today because, you know, it, it gave me some insight into life outside of, I think I was a college player, so I knew that those guys were super talented. Obviously, being inside the ropes gives you another level of perspective uh, that they're like super close to being a, a PGA Tour player. But those trips gave me great insight to, to life off the, off the course. I was on the bag for a Canadian Ryan Yip when he won on the Canadian tour. And like, I, I was like a lot of golf fans. Like, uh, I mean, I tell this story all the time is I started to take the, take the, uh, flag off of the 18th hole yep. and a volunteer came up to me. and was like, what the hell are you doing? You know? And I was like, uh, I won't, I'm the kid, I'm the winning caddy. I get the flag. And he's like, no, you don't like, and, uh, I mean, they needed it for play the next day. And 
and then you know I Ryan won and I was like what are you gonna do to celebrate he's like dude I got a eight hour drive to the next event I gotta be there <laughs> um doing nothing you know I'm putting this in the back of my car and I'm driving so all of those kind of gave me great you know insight and it kind of led to what this is I think a lot of us have been to a minor league baseball game or uh, understand that there's structure in all sports of where players come from, accepting golf. Uh, yeah. You know, baseball comes from AAA and, and football comes from college and then might come from the CFL or whatever. Uh, there is none. I, I don't, I mean, yes, the corn fairy is there, but besides that players come from everywhere. And so, mm-hmm. I think looking back on why it became popular is people just had no idea this world of golf existed for the most part. Or if they did, they didn't know what it looked like. Twirl, gang, 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 twirl, gang, twirl, twirl, gang, twirl, gang, give me that driver, I let it bang, twirl, gang, twirl, gang, give me that whiz, I'm taking dead aim, twirl, gang, twirl, gang, twirl, yeah and it's kind of great you shine light on it too because like you said i mean all the other sports i mean you can find triple a baseball on tv sometimes you can college football is huge obviously you can find east coast hockey on tv um but you, you'll never find a monday q or or q school or whatever on tv so i think it's great that especially for those up-and-coming pros who maybe even have the game at that stage to be on a higher level but just haven't made it yet it's good to shine light on these guys and kind of get them get them out there and and people might start paying attention more to kids coming up in the ranks you know and and then when they finally make it it's really cool to see all the steps they took to get there because it's a long road in golf long it is yeah i mean I think, and, and again, I think it is true in most sports, you know, baseball players are in the minors for a long time, but they're in a structured environment. They're getting a paycheck might not be much of one, but they're getting one. And it's just not the case in golf. So, um, you know, you spend a lot of your own money. It's one of the few sports that you can have a really good season on a mini tour and lose money for the year. So, uh, it's, it's an expensive sport. Again, no one should feel sorry for them. Every all these guys are choosing or girls are choosing to be out there, but I'm just trying to give some reality to what it looks like. I think, especially now, guys, is you know, golf has unfortunately talked about a lot of millions of dollars being thrown around, and mm-hmm. and I just try to remind people that's such a small percentage of the players that are playing professionally across the world. So. Uh, yeah, golf, we have talked about this before. Golf is an unbelievably top heavy financial sport. Like the the money is in like I you would know the stat better than I would, but I would guess it's in the top like point five percent or something like that, where it's really getting spread out across pro golfers, right? We've talked yeah, about it's how it's getting worse by the day. Yeah, and there's you know, there's so many there's so many professional sports, right? And it's hard to pick one over the other, but golf has to be one of the top ones where like a guy that we're talking to on the pod a couple of weeks ago or whatever it is, like say for instance, episode 150, when we were talking to Paps, like Etienne Papineau at one point in time, like is what, you know, the game he's bringing to the course each day is like one of the best games in the world. Like he was, it was right when we were going through the Pan Am championships, like beat players like Neiman, like Munoz, Abe answer, you know what I mean? Like it's just, absolutely unbelievable like the game he was playing he's playing corn fairy tour finals this weekend like or this past weekend so and you know you just don't know where his game is going to end up or if he's going to make the pga tour or if there's going to be a lot of money in that for him or not right so um and then like i remember looking back to one of the stories that you featured ryan with that remember nick benz bienz or nick benz yeah yeah so like you know then you got just like a guy who's just one of us bryce and like do you remember that story with the guy who's like he went pretty low at one of the Monday queues. And like, I remember, I think he had like three or four beers waiting to see if there was a playoff or something like that. Right. And like, um, so there's just so many different like variables in the sport. There's so many different types of personalities and stuff. Um, only 
a very small percentage make it to the top. And when we were talking with Bo uh, Brolt a couple weeks ago, um, after the pod, he was like, you know, you really got to reach out to Ryan. Like, I think he does a lot of, like, really good stuff and covering a lot of these things. But, like, one of the things we were talking about is how, like, it's so hard to get from playing really good golf and it takes you – if you're playing very good golf for two to three years, maybe you have a chance. But, like, we've talked about this with Craig Stefferak too, Bryce, like, about how there's, like, there's yep. no chan- There's no immediate channel. Like, it's taking so long to get there unless you just can get in Monday into a Monday, like Monday in or whatever it is, play well, make a bunch of money and maybe get another start. Right. So, um, any success stories or anything, Ryan, that like you remember covering over the years, like anything that's kind of like on your radar that you, that you kind of see, you saw somebody kind of get through that, uh, seems so rare for many people. Yeah. But I, but I also think guys is like, you know, a lot of that time, I mean, Patrick Flavin is a great example. Patrick, Monday like four times one year and finished top 10 and made, I think 400,000 and you'd think like oh, 400,000. Yeah. I mean, you burn through that so fast in pro yeah. golf. Uh, and Patrick is back at first stage playing with Mark Baldwin, my business partner and, and great friend down in Arizona this week, they started today and like Patrick is so good. <laughs> He's literally proven. And Mark is the same. Mark is, played in three PGA tour events in the last two years. And two of those made every cut Two of those. He's been in the top 20 going into Sunday. Patrick's finished in top 10 of PGA tour events. He's almost got special temporary membership, but if you don't play well on the right week at the right time, yep. it's, it's unfortunate, you know, again, it, it's what I love about the sport. So this is not a complaint, but if this was a draft, Patrick Flavin would be drafted. Uh, yeah. Like, and he would have a place and a place to develop. And they would say, Oh, over time, Patrick is good enough. Okay. He's on the PGA tour. Now I don't, no one wants that. Unfortunately, <laughs> seems like we're getting closer to stuff like that. But the fact is Patrick Flavin has proven quite frankly, this is up for debate. Like I think Patrick could be on tour. He's proven he could be on tour, but he hasn't played well at the right times, right? He hasn't played at Q school or he got his corn fairy card and struggled. So it's like, we know he can play, but it, it doesn't get there. So there's a lot of success stories. Obviously, Corey Connors, uh, Doc Redman, mm -hmm. Russell Knox, JT Poston, Patrick Reed, all jump started or began their career with the success of a Monday qualifier. Russell Knox, was top 50 player in the world at one time. Prior to that, he never got through Q school. He just wasn't good at Q school for whatever reason. He missed by 19 one year, which is bananas. Like, and then Monday qualified into a corn ferry event, finished second, and never he's never, I think he went to Q school last year, but he from the beginning of his career to when it was at his peak, he never went to Q school or never got through Q school. Uh and so you know, a lot of people have jump started their career at a Monday. So, uh, unfortunately, the PJ Tours looks like they're doing away with a large portion of what the PJ or the Monday qualifiers about. But there's always great stories every week. <clears throat> and back, back to the Nick Benz, I think Nick's a success story, even if he never makes it, because that's what I love about Mondays is. I mean, l listen, a lot of the guys I talk about, the likelihood of them making zero, the fact is there's only five PJ Tour cards and there's thousands of players, very good players playing for those five. So the odds are against everyone. Or even farther against Nick, he works a job and doesn't have a ton of money and the things that a lot of guys do have. So, but he'll never, he'll always have that story of the Rocket Mortgage, right? Like, yeah. and that's what makes it cool. He can always say no matter what, he played in a PGA tour event and no one will be able to take that away from him. So is it a success from like he jumpstarted his career? No, but he had an experience that will never be able to be taken away from him. Mark. And, go ahead. And Sorry, there's Bruce. just so few that can say that, right? There's so exactly. few that can say I played in a PGA tour event. Yeah. I mean, in the scheme of things, it's so 
0.0001 of all golfers. It's 0.0001 of college golfers for that matter. Uh, there's plenty of, I mean, Bryce or Braden Thorberry just got his card seven years after uh, he left college. He was the number one amateur in the world yeah. uh, and was almost out of golf uh, until this year. So um, the game is, is cruel. Uh, it's also why my, my account works is mm. it's, it's pretty cutthroat. I got a little bit of a theory for you here. I just came up with it recently. We talked to uh, Bo about it. I just, since you're kind of in deep into this kind of, I'm going to say lower end, not that I, I kind of don't really know what the right word is, but the lower end of golf. Yeah. Um, do you, I don't know if this will ever be a thing, but I think it would be great. And I want to just hear your thoughts on it. But what if the PGA tour kind of took a stance on getting kids that are playing the game well at a certain point into higher tiers quicker so say every week, top ten or bottom ten on PGA Tour get demoted to Corn Ferry. Top ten in that in every week get um, promoted to PGA. Bottom ten Corn Ferry go all the way down to PGA Tour Americas. Top ten come up. So it's just your top ten, bottom ten get flip flopped essentially. Do you think that would work? And do you think that would um, benefit the game? Or do you think that there's I mean too yes many flaws yeah. in that? I mean, I think if you had it over a longer stretch, week to week is pretty tough. But if you had a, you know, three month, three week stretch, you could do it. I think it would be amazing. Unfortunately, the PGA Tour just doesn't care about the bottom half. Yes. Of the thing. But it would be amazing. That, I mean, that's my whole thing, Bryce, with this whole shortening of the field. Less, sorry, less cards. I'm all in on less cards if it's a more open process. If there was regulation, uh, you know, like the motion of the top 10, that would be amazing because that creates chances for guys every week. That's my issue with less cards. It's not the less cards. It's that it's a smaller field and a closed door. Mm -hmm. Less Monday qualifiers, less people getting through Corn Ferry, probably going to get away with get rid of Q school at some point. Like, that's that's my main issue with all these changes on the PGA Tour is we're looking at another live. They're going to create rules where the top players stay forever. And the change out at the bottom of the tour is not very much. That's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And that's the unfortunate part. So I would love to see that. I would love to see any system. I, I'm all in on going back to for those listening that didn't don't know this. PJ Tour fields used to have like 50 exempt players and Mondays had like 70 spots. Everybody 51 and below, we're talking like big names nowadays, would yeah. be in the Monday. And you have to get through the Monday, and that's how the bottom half of the field mm -hmm. filled out. So I would love that. Obviously, that's a pipe dream at this point. But I just want the PJ Tour was has always been a pretty close shop. It's getting more and more closed, and it's it's really unfortunate. So yes, I would love any movement that yeah. creates opportunities so for players. My theory just behind that is like like we kind of talked about with uh, ATM Papano. Like you can be so good at on your on your game and be so good, and the difference between top end pros and these guys that are battling for cards is very very minor in the grand scheme of things. And yep. if you can just have even um three months, four months of just great golf, you can still not go anywhere with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just I feel like it's so frustrating, like even as a fan to see, because like there's so much potential down in these lower tours and mini tours and Monday Qs and this and that, but no one ever even gets to hear the name of the of the person playing, or like they just get lost in the weeds essentially. And I just think it's such a shame that these all this talent gets essentially goes to waste because you just have to be good for so long to make it. You know. Yeah, and it's hard for those players to, you know, Bo's a great example. I really, Bo's been amazingly close at some Mondays. See him at Nebraska struggle today in the first round of the uh, Q school, but like he's so good, right? And if he doesn't make it this year, whatever that final year is where he says, like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I don't think for a second he's wasted any of that time. 
But if you're Bo, it's hard to not look back and go yeah, like, feel that way. I've done yeah. this for seven years and all it's got me is in debt, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and you know, that's, it's, you got to find the right, he's married. You got to find the right wife. You got to find the right spouse. You got to find the right parents that are willing to help you out and be there when sponsors. Yeah. Mm-hmm everybody i mean i again i use mark as an example all the time because i talk to him every day and he's a business partner and he's broke golfer but he lives at his in-laws house vacation home you know you got to get commitment from them you got to get commitment for your wife that that's okay that you don't own your own home and you're going to live you know part of the year it's their vacation home but like part of the year with your parents and like you know it's a buy-in by so many people and again, everyone knows out there, Bo knows, Mark knows, Patrick Flavin knows that the odds are that you're not going to make it. Uh, and so that's hard. Uh, but it's also, you know, I think what people see in my account through the players I'm talking about is despite those odds, people and their support team, their spouses, what family, friends, like support someone chasing their dream. So, yep. uh, so the few success stories you lean on them, and all those guys lean on them. So, well, too, like to to kind of go back to like the relegation and and how exciting that would be. One of the sentiments that both Bryce and I shared was like the PGA Tour doesn't want to see JT playing on the corporate tour, right? Yeah. It's just like it's not it's not something that that's one of their more marketable players. Or like I remember a week it was a tour championship, I think, and it was him and. There was JT and Rory both at the bottom, right? So, like, with a theory in that sense, if you're playing for your game each week, then, or you're playing for your card each week, then you would see some of the top players have to make their way back, and a lot of them would, but some of them would not, right? So, I think that that's, uh, that makes, it's it's a money thing. There's a, t- a lot more marketing in, uh, you know, in Justin Thomas than uh, Ziggy Nathu. Sorry, Ziggy, to pull you into this one. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to be, but... Uh, but yeah, it's it's just one of those things, right? It's kind of like uh, it's just how sports work. It's how professional sports work, and we're kind of seeing Ziggy that just on catching strays. I yeah, think. sorry, Ziggy. Yeah. I didn't mean to like bring you <laughs> sorry, in this, Ziggs. but yeah, yeah, man, sorry, buddy. But uh, you know, it's I'm your, I'm still your second favorite caddy, right? That was, <laughs> I'm still I'm still I'm still hurting from that time where I didn't realize it wasn't his favorite caddy, and I learned that live on a podcast, uh, Ryan. Oh, so that was, that was that's tough. Rough. That was tough. It was yeah. it was I think rough it was. Scene. Dan Pickles or something like that. So I'm haunted <laughs> yeah. by that still. So sorry, Zig. I get but, you. I understand. But, uh, you know, it's kind of just one of those things where that's kind of when when you become, you know, somebody like the three of us on the podcast, you get a little bit deeper in. You got so many friends like Mark Baldwin and stuff like that. You got so many friends that are like, you know, trying to make it to that next level. And it seems like, uh, you know, there's some gatekeeping there. And that's a little bit tough, right? Like that's tough for them to to realize their career and their and a lot of like we've seen, you know, at Corner Prairie Tour Finals, there's they're not even one stroke different. Like there's one stroke difference from them getting to like the PGA Tour having full status or, you know, not at all. Right. So yep. it's uh it's really tricky for players to I don't know, to get there. To get there to where like the money is that they can like not live at their in laws and they can like have a family and feel some type of security for a period of time, whatever it is. And then, it, well, you know, and if you well, spike a win, afford, like, yeah, even just to afford to play in the next tournament. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Right. But yeah. Ryan, can we yeah, talk I mean, like a little bit about Mark? Um, like your friendship with Mark? Cause I remember Mark from like, he was in the, I think he played in the good, one of the good, good championships. He did. Yeah. And he, and he did really well there. His game's so clean. And then he had like the stuff with Phil right afterwards, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, I think Phil invited him by to like work on some of his games. So did he share like that experience with you at all? Yeah. Yeah. We don't share a lot of, uh, a lot of that, but I will share like he's at Phil's a lot. He, he and Phil are, are pretty close. He was at Phil's uh, three days ago, getting ready for Q school. Um, yeah. Phil's been amazing. I was texting with Phil Mickelson today, which is wild to say out loud. Uh, I, uh, I always send him the link of where Mark's playing. He always wants to see it. And nice. It's crazy to think Phil's like sweating blue golf scores on a on a random uh Tuesday. But yeah, he's been he's been amazing. Mark is uh and 
And those are the little nuggets that you got to keep. This one's obviously a, a bigger nugget, but the little things you got to keep, you got to keep holding on to. Mark, you know, Phil has said, like, hey, Mark can win on tour. And there's no reason to, to bullshit. <laughs> like, this is behind the scenes with no one around. Right. It's not mm-hmm. anything. It's like, so you got to hold on to those. And, you know, Mark struggled today at first stage, kind of got it back in the last few holes to, he's, well, he's fine, but he's outside the number. And you got to hold on to things like that in this, you know, this is the grind. This is the middle of it here. That first stage PJ tour card seems miles and miles away. You don't bring your best stuff on the first day. And you're like, okay, dude, like Phil Mickelson has said, or whatever that is for whatever carrot, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. Patrick Flavin has to say like, man, it was 18 months ago. I finished top 10 in a PJ tour event. Like, yeah, I know I can do this. You gotta like, just, you know, again, that carrot is so big. And some of these guys have had it. You just got to hang on. You got to get, you got to get through it. You know, Mark called me today and he's like, you know, down understandably. And I was like, dude, last year at first stage, we were under a tree on the 18th hole in the second round. It started to pour rain. You were like five outside the number. We were directly behind a tree, completely fucked. And you still got through, you know? And I was like, you shot even today. You're two outside the number. You're way, way better shape than you were last year. Yeah, the perception of it, yeah. Yeah, but when you're in the middle of it, you know, it's it's rough. Yeah, Yeah, you don't, you're not like, oh, things are going to be fine. You're like, this is the biggest tournament of my my year it's the only tournament that really matters i didn't play i didn't bring my best stuff today it's hard to not be like panicky so well uh, yeah yeah i had the same like the same conversation with cam Kellett like right when he finished uh the friday at the canadian open so i'm not sure if you followed that at all ryan but uh yeah. getting through shooting a course record at tarandoa um going in game was like absolutely peaking top canadian after day one, um, I think he was tied with Weirzy after day one, and then uh, I think he was two up going into uh, the back nine, and kind of slipped coming in, and he was like, you know, Macker, like I just like I just played defensive golf the whole way back, like, and you can't yeah. do that out there, right? And he was yeah. just like, he got to the point of where he was thinking about being like, you know, playing in a top twenty position. And then he slipped outside the cut and it can happen like so fast, right? Just being four, you know, just being four up on the back. And it's just like not great for him. Like it wasn't a great finish. And he was kind of like beating himself up a little bit, saying, oh, it's the biggest tournament of his life, biggest tournament of the year. But then he kind of like went in, talked to some guys. And one of those things is like got the mental reassurance that he'll be back, right? So, which I think it's hard too for a lot of players because they're still not sure if they will be back or get that opportunity again, yeah. right? So when you kind of like you miss that, I feel like it can be career changing, or or you're just like, shit, am I going to be waiting another year? Like in Mark's case, am I going to be waiting another year to get that like opportunity yeah. to like kind of get back here, right? And the only thing I could think of, we were kind of talking about like the relegations and stuff like that. The only thing I could kind of think of where a few more players get an opportunity is the U.S. Open. And the Open Championship, yeah. right? Like, there's a few more cards there, like, right after the Canadian Open. The names that were on the tee sheet to get into the U.S. Open was, it was, was like watching a PGA Tour event, right? Like, it was like, I was watching all the, like, I was watching some of our guys were in there. Like, Craig was in there, Cam, a few of the other guys were playing. And, like, you know, watching a few of the names, some of the guys that had been on the pod. And, like, it was just, uh, it was kind of cool to see them kind of mixing it up with, like, all the, like I think Mac Hughes might have played it. Like I, I don't really remember, but there were so many people that were kind of in the, uh, like playing at. Uh, I was at Cherry Hill, right? So it was, it was cool to see, and it kind of made me think. Like I feel like that's how golf should be. Like more top elite players should be earning their way in. Earning their way in, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's because once you're once you get that status, like it's there for like a year or whatever it might be, or all it takes is a couple like decent weeks throughout the year to to keep that right so there's got to be a shake-up in golf but is there um any tournament stretch or anything like that ryan that like you really follow that you like any time of year like in the um you know in the mini tour world that kind of is a peak for you yeah i mean this time of year and then u.s open is uh i mean the waste management is my favorite monday but this time of year i mean really sums up 
pro golf. Obviously, final stage has moved to December. So, you know, final stage, I mean, Aiden Springer lost his child uh, um, and got his PJ Tour guard three weeks later. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, th- this is the best stories in golf. And again, these guys may never make it back to the PGA tour. They might play this year and that's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But but they have the chance and, and Hayden looks like he's going to keep his card. He's a couple more made cuts, but he's in really good position right now. And so, uh, yeah, Q school is, yeah. U S open. I want, I want golf to be more open. And so it's not going to be quite frankly, uh, that's such that's a great, unfortunate. that's such a great experience like a great example ryan is like hayden springer like i chatted with him like quite a bit at the end of last year um obviously like a pga tour canada grad kind of getting in and uh shot 59 and like mm-hmm. still has a lot of work to do to be able to like kind of keep it you know what i mean it's it's a guy who shot 59 on tour there's only so many guys who can do it right and and i think he's got like the one of the lowest nines of all time or something too right so yeah. Um, or the way he did it, like it was, oh, he finished the final three holes four under, I think it was, or something like that, right? Because yeah. he, he hold out, yeah. he hold out, nobody else has ever done that in the history of the game, right? So yeah. you attach your name to something like that, and you think, like, if somebody with that kind of talent struggling to, like, be able to keep a card, there's got to be something missing, and, and uh, you know, something that I'm sure all of us, like, listening to the pod are interested in, we'd like to explore that a little bit more, right? We'd like to be able to see more Hayden Springers regularly playing and, and uh, people that we kind of like fall in love with their story. Right. Because he's got such a great story. You know, like you said, lost his daughter three weeks later, gets his card and uh, has a pretty good year, has a pretty good year. And like, we'd love to be able to like, you know, you kind of become a fan of players when you, when you realize those things, right? Like when we were talking with Paps and he was telling us a little bit about like how much he connects with like Sahith and realizing like a few players that we've talked to just like, saw it seems like such a nice dude cool dude like i know that you've messaged with him quite a bit ryan and stuff so like it seems like uh you know you get to know some of the players and then you you kind of want to watch them week in week out and saw his like obviously an ex- exception to the rule he's one of the top players in the world he's going to be there he's going to be there for a long time but you know we want to be able to see some of our guys too some of the guys who've been on the pod that are playing really well we want to see them get there right so it's um, yeah i hope i hope the the ship turns the other way Again, guys, you know, a mentor of mine, one of the best writers of all time uh, in the golf space, Michael Bamberger said, when I when I shared my article with him, I said, uh, he said, you know, for the history of the PGA Tour, the job of the commissioner was to find playing opportunities for, for all of his members. And now, for the first time ever, it's the opposite. <laughs> Uh, they're trying to eliminate playing uh, privileges and opportunities for some of their members. And it's just it's sad as, as a fan. So, yeah, he, the Hayden Springers of the world, obviously, hopefully Hayden stays, but the Hayden Springer stories of the world, uh, at least in the short term in pro golf, are, are going away. Um, you know, I I just can't believe that signature events, PGA Tour, non-signature events, and Corn Ferry Tour are going to survive. I'm going to assume we're going to see signature events be the PGA Tour and the Corn Ferry with some growth and a little more money be the Corn Ferry or AAA or whatever they're going to call it. Uh, I don't think we're far away from that. The John Deere's of the world and the Barracudas mm-hmm. of the world and uh, you know the events that don't draw the big stars and all those kind of things are just going to roll up into whatever they're going to call it corn fairy events and we're going to go. So I I hope, you know, Ben Griffin and I have had some conversations. He said it in an interview on the PGA tour, just said, you got to believe that the players that are on their way up when they get there, will open the door back up. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you got to hold on to. Because yeah. you know we're headed towards hundred, hundred player fields, hundred twenty player fields with a lot of the same people over and over again here pretty quick. Again, though, I just want to reiterate, kind of, I think what you're doing is phenomenal because you are shining light on those stories and trying to get those Thank you. out there. 
And I think the players in those situations really appreciate you too, because it gets their name out there. Like I said, um, a lot of these people playing and grinding, no one's ever heard of, or no one ever will hear of, but I think it's great what you're doing because it shines light on that, that side of golf that I think people have no clue what these guys go through or girls go through. And, and it's such a grind. And I love that you're shining light on it because it kind of gives them a little, little time to show off and kind of be, be present in the golf space, even though it's, there's no light being sh- being shown, shone, shone onto that. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, either one. Onto either that one's side of golf. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's I appreciate it, Bryce. And I and I couldn't I couldn't do it without the players. You know, these guys, there's never very rarely a, a time that I, you know, ask a player a question and it's why I love what I cover is I I go to two tour events sometimes and I see what the top journalists from like big companies have to deal with like agents and they're getting you know they get they're begging for one-on-ones and they're like oh you know begging people to come on their podcast and and i get it those are that's what they have to do that's not and you know i just uh and they get a lot of cliche answers and i'm just so appreciative of the players i cover almost none have agents if they do it's not anyone they deal with it's not like i have to go through the agent to get an interview the agent is like trying to find them sponsors and you know those kind of things and so you know i have an honest relationship with a lot of players and they just say what they feel because they don't have they don't really have anyone to answer to well i feel like just from an outside looking in you're as valuable to them as they are to you i think i I mean i i try my best to be you know these guys, uh, you got to look at the relationship, the PGA tour, the PGA tour doesn't care about these guys. Uh, and so I tried my best to be the voice of who they are because quite frankly, they, they can't say anything, you know, uh, obviously they can, but it doesn't, you know, it's going to be awkward on the tee. There's veterans that'll be pissed at them and those kind of things. And, you know, so, yeah, I try my best to be the voice of the players that don't really have a voice. Yeah. Well, I, I think we kind of do that a lot too, indirectly with a lot of players, right? Because we give them sort of like a platform where they can share their story and and sort of what have, one of our roles have been uh, with a lot of players that are playing like mini tours, NCAA, whatever it might be. I know that's changing with some of the NIL rulings and stuff, but um, we've been able to connect dozens of players with sponsors and it's been mm-hmm. really cool like over the you yeah, know this awesome. this is going to be like episode 210 or something like that so over the last yeah. four and a half years bryce and i have been able to meet create bonds create friendships and then um you know kind of follow their game become friend, become f- like friends and fans of them right but also like yeah we have a partnership with like a great company full wedge up here we t- talked with you know dozens and dozens of other brands so we're able to kind of like connect that you know, make that connection for them and hopefully, you know, help them out when they're, you know, trying to get uh, across Canada or across, uh, yeah. you know, PGA Tour yeah. LA. For the like next the tournament, past, right? one yeah. week at a time. Exactly, well, right? Yeah. So Just ma- to add on to Mac, you kind of briefly touched on this, but our thing is kind of similar to yours. It's like, if I can give you, or me and Mac, if we can give you a little bit of exposure, like it's yeah. better than not having it, you know? So that's kind of, that's kind of been our whole motto with this whole thing is like, small company it's awesome guys players. Yeah. Yeah. you come on you give your spiel you talk about yourself or your company and we just even though we don't have millions of listeners i mean at least there's a, another a couple hundred or a handful of people that know about you now that didn't know about, about you before kind of thing and i think we find we find joy in that and and like to hear people's stories and and i know you're doing yeah. a similar thing and i think it's kind of it's good it's good for the game well, yeah, for sure. I mean, keep at it. And yeah, I mean, it's super rewarding to, you know, I've been, again, this is all my followers. I just have a platform. It's like, you know, put out Venmo's and then raise money or companies. And again, if it's $500 or 50,000, like, you know, just get the guys to the next event. Yep. See, it, yeah. could, it could change their life. So, um, been plenty of guys who've gone broke. I mean, Tom Lehman sold his clubs to get home one time. I see his kid in the in Q school this week. So there's a million stories out there. 
Oh, there definitely is, and it's uh, it's cool to be able to share them. And like even your Ryan Yip story, it's cool because the golf space is so small. Like I was at last month, I was up visiting Bryce, and uh, we went to play Travis Point, which you know it's not that far from your area too, there, Ryan. And then uh, I was over at EMU, a good friend of mine, Andy Walker's the head yep. coach there now. So like we did a pod with Andy, and then Ryan came out after and um, just kind of like introduced himself. We were shooting the shit for a little bit, like great guy, and like turns out to be somebody that you've caddied for you know what i mean it's just like yeah. such a small world there's uh you know although there's thousands and thousands of golfers one of the things that we kind of when we were connecting with bo we were saying it was a, such a small world and uh and when things happen it spreads pretty quickly and you know obviously there's a lot of things happening in golf right now where where maybe it's not benefiting the players as much right so if we can kind of have a conversation about it and anybody wants to listen, wants to have a conversation about it, then they can, you know, hopefully just be a little bit of a voice too. And maybe it'll, maybe it'll change, right? Maybe we'll see some change. Let's hope. Right? Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. But uh, before we let you go, I know, I know you mentioned that you were, you were kind of like working on something right now. You had something in the works. Have you, sure. uh, have you been able to wrap that up? Uh, I mean, I haven't, but I'll, I'm happy to talk about it. Sure. Uh, yeah. Inside scoop. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Uh, let's play the, yeah. Play the, I mean, back play the music. To the, yeah. The, the back to the PGA tour that, you know, doesn't care about players. So they gave an advance to players for those listening that don't know if you, if you're a rookie on the PGA tour, they now give you $500,000 and it's an advance on the money you earn. But if you don't earn 500,000, you don't have to pay it back. Um, they forgot to take taxes out of it. The first year they gave this in 2022, Four days before Christmas, they called the players that didn't make five hundred thousand dollars and let them know they owed between ten and sixty thousand dollars. And you know, there's a lot of the article is going to be really kind of the lack of communication. Four days before Christmas, and the PJ Tour, whose commissioner makes twenty million dollars, uh, who's spending money like crazy, is now trying to collect. $10,000 from a guy who just lost status. Um, and there's nothing that these players can do about it. Again, they don't have a voice, so they just say yes, and they watch half of their corn fairy check get taken until this is paid back. And uh, I just think it's super shitty. Yeah. Uh, when the tour makes a mistake and they chase, you know, I, I will say it in the article, you think if Tiger they made a mistake with tiger and forgot to take the taxes out they'd be hey tiger can you pay us forty eight thousand dollars well, of course not yeah they would wave it and they should uh and they should wave it for the guys that have had this money taken because it's their mistake and these guys need it and uh it's just it's just the way that in my experience it's the way the pga tour treats these guys and it's it sucks it really really quite frankly sucks uh is these that are guys who are fighting for their career and to get a call four days before christmas that they owe tens of thousands of dollars for a mistake the pga tour made is is a joke quite frankly did that only happen the one year right they... yeah so this year uh the players that graduated in uh 23 for this season got of the five hundred thousand, they only got four uh, only they got four hundred thousand dollars cash for this exact reason, uh, okay. because of the state taxes that the PGA Tour is paying. So at the end of the year, the PGA Tour will make good if you didn't hit a hundred thousand dollars in taxes with you. So they're doing it in reverse, uh, which is again the PGA Tour doesn't ever admit mistakes. But that's their way of admitting a mistake that yeah. they did the first year is like doing it different the second year. So uh again, it 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 really seems like the tour uh is kind of like just announcing things and doing things without any forward thinking. It's amazing to me that a multi-billion dollar company uh handed 30 guys five hundred thousand dollars and no one raised their hand and was like, What about the taxes on this? Like right. how do, and and pro golf taxes are wildly uh, intricate and difficult because it's where you earn your state. I mean, you have literally, you know, Mark, when he played on the Corn Ferry Tour, you have 25 or 30 states that you have to pay state tax to. It's where you earned your money. 
So like it's a very forward part of a pro golfer's career is taxes because it's very complicated. No one on the PGA tour raised their hand and was like, Hey guys, before we hand them 500,000, can we think through the taxes yeah, of no what's going to happen here? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then to call guys again, the, the total amount they're trying to collect is around $200,000, which is $20 to the three of us, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's your mistake. You just go, Hey guys, super sorry. Just to let you know, if this happens again, you would have owed taxes, but we made a mistake. We're sorry. We're going to let you off. Uh, yeah. It was our mistake. We're, we apologize. We'll eat the uh, car. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. It's two hundred thousand dollars is not even the difference between first and second. Yeah. I mean, there's more. You know, it's nothing mm-hmm. to the PGA Tour, and so to be collecting it from those guys. But again, there's a lot to it. There's lack of communication. They just handed these guys five hundred thousand. Didn't give them any advice on how to handle the taxes on their own and stuff. It's just PGA Tour is just it's not running very well right now, quite frankly. It's all there is to it. Yeah, well, also just to add on to that, like, I mean, I grew up playing hockey my whole life and kind of was a late bloomer into, like, school and, and growing up, essentially. And I know a lot of these guys are in the same boat, and, like, I would have no idea what to do, you yeah. know? That's, like, you're kind of putting all these, I mean, most of the guys are younger, and, like, you're kind of putting them in a position to fail unless you kind of provide some information on kind of how to deal with that stuff, too, and, right? Like, on top of and that. And, again, you, you trust the tour to give you some information, like, Hey, you know, they told these guys, like, you're going to have to pay income tax on it. Understandably, they did the next year, but they didn't talk about the state taxes. Yeah. These guys assumed that it was coming from Florida. The check came from Florida. So there's no state tax. So they assume there's no state tax. But the tour didn't realize that they still had to pay taxes on where they earned it. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's very the, little about the money. It's about the message and yeah. that you don't care about these players. It's just as simple to too as like hiring one more person as like a tax consultant or something and say, hey, go have meet with this guy for like an hour. He'll tell you what to do and everything. Everything would have been fine probably. But, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I mean, any big company bit, that hands people $500,000 would probably have a lot of seminars and yeah, give some advice. Or at the very least, they just handed these guys 500 grand. They didn't even sign anything. Like, yeah. they're just like, here's 500 grand. Yeah. Like no company in the world. Yeah, like you would think, like thousand dollars. Yeah, here's your here's your five hundred k, and here is uh, Ryan. He's our our tax guy. He's gonna explain what you need to do with this. Yeah, and uh, you exactly. Can, you can click this link in the email we just sent you at this yes. time and uh, set up a set up a meeting with him. Would have been yes. super simple to do. And then instead of they going have back, a spot, like Grant Thornton's a sponsor. Like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do you I mean, um, Ryan? Do you know how many players it affected? Yeah, like uh, about 10, okay. um, you know, anywhere from, again, 10,000 to, I think the most is, is 60. Some of the players, again, this is the PGA Tour and it's work, you know, some players are scared to talk. So yeah. I didn't talk to all of them. I talked to plenty of them. Um, and I talked to people around the other people, which understandably, no, no problem. Totally understand. They don't want to talk about it. But yeah, between 10 and uh, 60,000. And yeah, I'm sure you if... know, some guys paid it off in one check. Some guys had 50% taken off. Some guys didn't play well and, uh, and haven't paid it off. And so, yeah. uh, you know, it's again, four days before Christmas is after the okay. guys have lost their PGA tour card and missed at Q school. Ugly. That's I'm going to assume you realized that the situation about eight or 10 months prior to that, when the first event happened and you're like, wait a minute, we're paying state taxes for these guys and they're not. So, uh, yeah, this is not a well-run organization. It seems from the outside right now. There was probably like only three days worse that they could have probably brought that up. And that was like the next three subsequent days before Christmas. But like, <laughs> like you say, there's that eight months of, uh, you know, 150, 180 days or whatever it is that they, somebody realized in that period of time that, yeah, they were paying the yes. tax and the players were going to have to at some point, right? So, yeah, they hope that everybody got over 500,000, then 
it wasn't an issue. They just took a little extra money. Uh, and then when these players didn't, then they were stuck. Yeah, the idea so, is just like, well, let's hope this problem goes away rather right. than get out in front of 100%. it and deal with it, right? So that's yeah. it's really kind of tough to see that. And like, it's just a whole other avenue on top of like kind of what we've spoken about for the last, you know, nearly an hour about like mini mini tours and like the space available and there just isn't that much space available. And then shit, even if you don't make it or if you, even if you do make it and then you don't make it the next year, you might still be paying a bunch of money on top of yeah. that too, which is kind of tough, right? Yeah. So it's tough. Yeah, yes. definitely not, a tough look, but not a lot of optimism right now in the mini golf world. A lot of guys went to Q school, like, man, I really got to make it this year because yeah, change is coming. I got to make it before those changes come. So well, Ryan, uh, Dylan Gunther, first uh, Utah hockey club goal. Just a second ago. Oh, oh all right. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Good for him, man. I'm a huge hockey fan. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Are you a uh are you yes, like I'm a Red Wings fan? Are you a Red Wings oh. fan? Okay. That's all right. right. We're we're Leafs fans. So that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah, we're definitely uh Bryce are still a, a Leafs fan for now. Who knows? Maybe and Eisenman we trust. He's yeah. he's we're on the we're finally oh, on you, the way back. Yeah, you guys are on the come up. We're at the come up and we can't do anything so yeah you're a better boat than we are don't worry how good does that mo satter pick look the, remember like the back pessimism in the, of a uh, of a leafs fan already started before the yeah. before the season has even begun uh, yeah yeah it's just uh i mean you have the right it's a lions fan i mean that's how yeah. you feel as a lions fan the whole yeah. time well it's just more of like we know we're gonna get there and just won't get it done it's just, yeah it's just, it's just become a custom to every least fan like we'll still cheer like heck every game and, and every playoff yeah. game we all maybe pally will turn it around maybe pally will turn it around yeah Hopefully. maybe we'll get to the second round this year who knows maybe. yeah and maybe yeah two out of nine years right why not but uh <laughs> Ryan, really appreciate Thanks, this, man. For, really appreciate you yeah. just being a voice for the players. The players are so important to us. It's so important to kind of like what we've been doing with the pod. So appreciate you uh, having the connection that you do and coming on, sharing it with us, man. We'd love to do it again sometime. And uh, all Ryan's information, if you're still with us, is in the show notes below. Go ahead and, and click it. Say hello. And, Great uh, follow, too. Please yeah, good follow. good follow. Go check it out. Support some of the uh, the players that you've listened to here on the pod, too, because uh, I know you, uh, you connect with quite a few of them. Thanks so much, Ryan. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. He's out in my ball and of course so I tee up. Uh, I lose the ball and I re up. Yo. I miss a fairway, I probably end up in the ocean or maybe the beach. And I'm on a part five and I'm finna go reach it. Reaching. Second was blind, I see it. Yeah. Feel like it might be an average. I was working.